bringing the people behind our food to life. Everybody worries about what dogs shouldn't eat, but nobody ever talks about what dogs should eat. And so we kind of get, build up this thing that, oh, dogs shouldn't eat people food. It's not people food, it's just food. People food goes on your plate and should stay on your plate. But uh, ingredients, they're just ingredients, they're just food. So I try to always help dogs get a better share of actual food. And my approach at feed, for feeding a dog is to do 50% commercial food and 50% homemade food. With the commercial food, they're gonna get all those vitamins and minerals, and that's what keeps dogs, a dog's body from failing. And then the other 50% homemade is, can be almost anything. I like to use um, eggs as one of my primary sources. A scrambled egg is quick, easy, um, has everything inside that shell that is necessary to form a baby chick. So it can do, form a lot of powerful things in your dog's body. And then also that eggshell is really high in calcium. Since calcium is one of those things that dogs need, uh, you can dry them in the oven, uh, powder them up in a food processor or a blender until it's a really fine dust and that creates an additional source of calcium to meet a dog's high calcium requirement. And then, then I kind of look around the grocery store and I say, hey, what else should we add here? Um, there's a lot of opportunity. Pork is probably one of the meats that is not served to dogs as much because there's a lot of concentration on beef and chicken and turkey. Uh, but lean cuts of pork are really good. Um, lean cuts of beef, beef heart is really good. Uh, I particularly like using things like chicken gizzards and chicken hearts in a dog's food because they like it. It's chewy, it's meaty. Um, they're really good sources of protein and they're cuts of meat that are secondary to what we eat. And then I kind of go to town when it comes to the produce aisle and I like to throw in things like um, yams, uh, carrots, green beans, uh, spinach, apples, plums. Our dog Baxter is crazy about plums. Um, he can smell it from like, uh, you know, a block away. And then I try to throw in things like rosemary. It's really high in antioxidants and uh, antibacterial properties. I like turmeric because it has cancer fighting properties. Uh, I throw in a ton of parsley into the dog's food because that's really high in vitamin K and it's really high in cancer fighting properties. And then pretty much I just kind of try to do a lot of variety. I try to alternate between a lot of different foods. And that's one of the great things about doing that is you can also take advantage of this is on sale or this is more available or this is seasonal. Um, one thing about vegetables and fruits, the more um, fibrous it is, the more difficult it will be for a dog's short digestive system to process that. So they actually need you to either mechanically do it break it down by grating it or chopping it really finely or using a uh, cooking it well so it's cooking until it's very soft. Um, things like carrots and apples are pretty easy for them to digest but the more harder or fibrous it is the more help that they need.